welcome everybody to this Monster Hunter World video. I'm the Seventh Sword and now it's time to show you this bow build. So this bow build is for people who may not be experienced with the bow or just may want some more survivability with the bow and it'll help you learn the weapon and it'll help you survive in, uh, in you know, in monster fights. This isn't a min-max highest DPS in the world build like there are, you know, so many of out there. It's, it's not hard to do those builds, you just have to sacrifice everything for your attack. So, it really isn't that difficult to get the highest attack in this game. What can be difficult at times if you don't know the monster's patterns and moves, if you're fighting a new monster, or you just haven't put in as much time in this game as some other people have, is sometimes just surviving the actual hunt. Especially if you're doing a lot of solo builds. Or, sorry, a lot of solo hunts. So, let's get into it really quick. This armor is actually uh, using a lot of pieces from my slot, slot, slots video. So, uh, I, I went over all the slots in that one, so I'm not really going to go over this one. I'm just going to show you the equipment again, though. So, this is what I currently have equipped right now for this specific build. I've got the Dragon Perforator 3, which is really nice because it gives you two, two slots, which is very rare on bow. There's a lot. There's not a lot of uh, bow weapons that give you a lot of slots. There are a few, but there there's not that many. And this one's nice because it actually has a hidden element, so you can work with that in terms of boosting it elementlessly, or you can try to free the element up and you can go that route. But anyway, I've got the Zora headgear beta plus, a black belt mail beta plus, acidic lavinous braces beta plus, t uh, Tigrex tassets beta plus, and the Kushla cruise beta plus. And this is basically a dodge bow survivability kind of build. On this thing, I also have a temporal mantle for additional survivability when you want to just be able to not worry about being killed for a little bit, and then an affinity booster because this this uh, specific bow doesn't have any affinity at all, so it'll be nice to get that critical boost up in battle during some critical moments. Alright, so let's actually go uh, really quickly now to show you exactly what I have on this build and then we'll show you the decorations and how that all kind of fills in. I also have an earplugs charm 3 equipped. I don't care what anyone says, being roared out of attacks is very annoying. You lose a little bit of DPS, especially if you don't have that high of a DPS to begin with. So if you can attack through the roar, you gain a little bit extra that way. And there are some monsters that when they roar, they have a follow-up attack. And depending on what weapon you're using, like a bow, which is, you know, kind of lengthy to put away, you're not able to put that away in time to dodge out of some of their attacks. So being able to just go through those roars is just very, very, very nice. Especially with that brute Tigrex out there. I don't know if anyone's fought that yet, but, uh, earplugs. Take earplugs. Alright. Earplugs 5. Evade window 5 so that you have that maximum invulnerability. Stun resistance so you never get stunned because being stunned is super, super annoying. Health boost 3. Like I said, this is about survivability, so you've got that maximum health cap increase. Evade extender so you dodge farther. The bow's dodge is already incredible and this just makes it so much, so much better. Mushroom Mancer. I'll show you guys in the training area why I love Mushroom Mancer on a bow because not only does Mandragora act like a max potion and you can carry 10 of them, again survivability here, and you just pop them so quick. You also have the Devil's Blight which gets you that stamina boost which is really, really good. It acts like all of the stamina buffs, but not 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 maxed out, but like at level three or something like that. It's really good. Spread power shots because you want to increase your attack a little bit on those. Because we're gonna be doing a lot of dodging, so we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, power shots, and we're gonna be doing a lot of thousand dragons, things like that. Stamina thief is really nice. Just just a perk for one of the four slot jewels or decorations that I have on. Exhausting the monster is always a good thing to do. Fortify, so if you do die, you actually get stronger and your defense goes up. Again, survivability. Special ammo boost, which increases the power of Thousand Dragons even more. It also increases Dragon Piercer, but we're probably not really going to be using Dragon Piercer too much on this build. And in, in, in occasional moments, but typically, I think Thousand Dragons has a higher damage uh, DPS potential. Just because of the Slinger ammo and stuff that you can pick up on the ground. Quick Sheath, because it slightly increases your sheathing speed, which is nice. Speed Eating, this is just kind of like a bonus effect. Flinch Free, so if you're playing with some friends and you're trying to get up really close to do a, dr a thousand dragon, you don't get knocked out of that attack. A bow charge plus, because that's absolutely necessary on any bow build, no matter what you're making. And then Mind's Eye, again, another one that I believe is actually really necessary, because this effectively makes every arrow that you're using a close range coating, so you don't lose any damage when you get too close. And this also lets you get a little bit farther away as well, and retain that perfect distance from just slightly even farther away. So, it just gives you more of a radius to work with with a bunch of different coatings, normal arrows and power coatings included. So, again, this is a customizable build depending on what you are fighting, so let's go to the decorations. Let's just really quickly go down the decorations here. Now, 
on the bow, I've got Mind's Eye and a Steadfast Jewel. Unfortunately, I have to put it in a two slot. It's a waste. It feels like a waste, but I don't quite have all the decorations I want yet to make everything perfect. There's going to be a lot of grinding to still do in this game. It's, it's ridiculous. And I don't have all the charms that I want to upgrade in order to create more decoration slots and take things out and stuff like that. So onto the helmet, I've got a Gobbler Evasion Jewel. I've got an Evasion Jewel and a Vitality Jewel. On the male, I've got the Spread Jewel. I've got one Fungi Form Jewel to get that Mushroom Mancer all the way up. Another Vitality Jewel. On the braces, I have a Sheath Evasion Jewel, the Jumping Jewel, and the Vitality Jewel again to get that Vitality Max. On the tacits, I've got the Fortitude Evasion Jewel, the Mighty Bow Jewel, and the True Shot Jewel. And on the cruise, I have a Drain Evasion Jewel and then the Earplugs 3 Jewel to then max out that Earplugs 5. Depending on what you're fighting, you can you can kind of take some stuff out here. So let's say, say for example, you're fighting that, you know, that Valhazak there with all that Miasma, right? You could take out the Vitality Jewels and you can substitute them in for Miasma Jewels or whatever Blight you want to get rid of for that time. Uh, you can also go the route of maybe not completely getting rid of one thing, like you can get rid of a couple things. So you can get rid of like one level of evasion and one level of vitality and you can equip uh, like a four slot Miasma Jewel for example. So there's a bunch of different versatility there and what's nice is that this armor is very similar to the slot slot slots armor. I think I only have one piece, the Kushla Cruz in place of the uh, Yangaruga legs and it just gives you a lot of room to work with as you can see which is very 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 nice now let me just really quickly show you what's inherently on the armor that I'm wearing just so that you have a feel for the actual skills themselves that you just get from wearing the armor so on the Zora you get the flinch free on the black belt you get the mushroom answer 2 acidic lavinous you get the sun resistance 2 Tigrex, you get your plugs one, and then crucially you get that evade extender two. Now I'm going to take this to the training room really quick and just show you exactly why I enjoy this build, even though it's not doing immense crazy amounts of damage. It just gives you uh, lots of, again, survivability. So let's go to the training area. So I haven't even eaten yet, but as you can see, if I eat a Mandragora, increases my health to max, and then the Devil's Blight will increase my stamina to the current max that it's able to do. You can eat a Parish Room, which gives you more defense. You can eat a Nitro Room, which gives you attack. And then you can even eat a Toadstool, which gives you a little bit better recovery speed if you get hit. And so, like, look, just look at how far that goes, which is really, that, like, that dodge is so good with that evade. The bow is such a good dodge. So I'm going to show you a real quick uh, comparison here now. We got the close range coating. We're up here. Right? And then I'm going to go to my power coating. Which normally you would actually be doing less damage at this at this range. But because of that mind's eye, you're actually doing more. Which is very nice. And that's not too too bad damage on that uh, thousand dragon there. It's nothing like, you know, super insa in insane and crazy or whatever. But then when you add in a piercing pod to it... And you get up nice and close, because you got to be really close for Thousand Dragon. You get a little extra damage with that Piercing Pod. So that's what you want to do. You want to... Obviously, Piercing Pod is one of the better ones to do, but as you're attacking monsters and you're knocking off those... This is the Slinger ammo and everything like that. Just make sure... I would say using them for damage is really nice. See, I would say that if you're with a hunting party, you want to actually focus more on using Thousand Dragons. Because someone else... Let someone else knock the monster to the wall so that you can just go up right to their face. And you can just go BAM! and do that extra damage with that. So, uh, if you're alone, then you're gonna have to knock them down because that the, the damage is really nice, and then hopefully what you do is you leave some slinger on the, on the ground there, and then you pick it up on the way, and boom. So, ah, I love it, so good. But yeah, so I mean, that's my Monster Hunter World Dodge Bow build. I don't like the way it looks, but again, you can always put on a sweet, sweet layered armor to make it look better. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.